what I wanted to talk about today is how you can architect your React app to be scalable and easy to refactor. The idea here is we want to allow other devs that come in or join the team to easily be able to find certain parts of code. And it might seem like a lot of boilerplate, but ultimately it's absolutely necessary to get these things in at the beginning as a good foundation for your React app. Right, so you'll see here on the screen a few folders and files that I've already created. This is a typical React project when you start up. In the source folder, what I tend to do is immediately is put in these four folders that you can see now components root store and views components are going to be your reusable shared components so like stuff like buttons forms a header if you've ever heard of the atomic design principles by ux and, and web designers it kind of splits a web page up into kind of you've got atoms molecules and i don't know what the levels there are but yeah this kind of your components folder will be your component library so it's, it's, if, if a component is only used in one place, like say on a, on a home page, then it wouldn't actually go in here. Even if it's a small component, it should live in the view. But as soon as you find a component that is used more than once, they will all move into the components folder. And that's kind of the you know, general idea you have to keep going with. So uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's drill down into a component uh, and see how they're structured so you can see here there's different types of components and you see a lot of different files here. it looks like a lot of files like I said I'll go over a simple one first the button we've got an index file uh, and that's just so when you are importing this component anywhere else is you don't have to specify the the file name the first bit of code that would be placed is the UI code that would be done that's the button.ui. So now what you'll see here is a bit of a pattern here. We're going to have the name of the entity dot and then what it functions as. So that could be like uh, just UI, so just markup. Um, it could be tests, it could be anything else. But so you've got the, the entity, the function, and then obviously the file extension. This kind of makes it easier to add new things, remove things, um, and, and really kind of separates the concerns. Like the idea here is we want to separate stuff by concern. We don't want to mix styling with markup. It's not necessary. In this case, we don't have one, so I'm just going to quickly add in like style. So if we're using style components, I would generally have a dot style in the component. If you're using CSS modules, might just be that a SAS file instead and that's imported into the actual UI component so that's the first level uh, then you can see spec is just, that's just your test um, you can call it test or spec whatever, whatever floats your boat and that's how simple kind of component is broken down moving on to the more complex components so form component now with forms uh, I know a lot of people use different libraries like redux forms or formic is a popular one it's not really that necessary unless you've got an app that is heavily form-based and this requires a lot of data entry. Generally, if you've got a more functional website, you don't really need to have a form library. But yeah, Formix is a good one. I've used Redux Forms in the past and uh, it's been pretty good. But you know, when you want to do some custom actions or different things that kind of got out of the framework, it, it makes it quite difficult to do that. It's a lot of work around that. And plus with Redux Forms, it, it chucks all the form set up into the Redux store, global store, which is kind of pointless because you don't need it globally, you just need it for that instance. So Formic is, is a better choice in that sense for most React apps because it keeps the state local in the React component. Anyway, in this case, we're just using local React state. So what I do then tend to do, I name those files. So I don't keep the stateful stuff with the UI stuff. So we've got form.state form.ui. UI will just have the pure markup of the form and that will just be, you know, the form tags. Dot UIs, I've got to say, are usually generally just functional function components. So there's arrow functions that return some JSX. Stateful components will have all the logic behind it. So they'll, that's where you'd initialize a state. Um, you know, then you can, you can also implement the lifecycle methods in this layer. This would 
kind, this is what I mean by separating com by concerns. All the logic for how the workings go doesn't affect the rendering. So the rendering will still work. If you st import just the UI, that would still render as it does, uh, the look of it. Um, to make it function, you have the stateful layer. Moving on to then header below, you'll see that I've got dot .container. Dot .container is m more of a term that's used with Redux when you have React and Redux, but it, it's, it's generic enough to be used with any type of state management framework. So you can still use it with MobX or even React's context API. Um, container would be where you connect it or in say the context API way it would be where you have your consumer you could change container to consumer that's the beauty of this naming method where you have entity function uh, because now then yeah I, c I could easily change that uh, to oops can easily change that to consumer and it will still make sense it's consuming some context or global state so yeah that's how components look like right moving on I want to go to I'm going to skip the other two and just going to look at views first so your views are just literally your views they're like your pages of your app yeah, I like to call them views because we're not building websites we're building web apps here with react so yeah your views would be where the components are used and in views as well like I said if you have like a sing a component that's only used in that place just say we have got something like a banner just say it's a functional banner so this banner component would just live in here because it's only used by home UI. The whole point here then is say so a new developer comes joins the team and then he's asked to change the banner on the home page to show something else. He should be able to say okay if it's if I'm changing the banner on the home page let's look at the home page first. If it's not a reusable component like this one then he'll find it there like straight away and he'll be able to change it. No no issues. If it is a reusable component he'll he'll obviously find the import in the home UI file. So that would still be good. Yeah, that's that's the views. Okay, let's look at store. Now, store's empty at the moment because I wanted to do that as I'm talking. So if you're using Redux, I would have the structure like this. I'll create a home folder. And in here, I'd have home.actions.js. Uh, home.reducer and what I like to do as well is put in the initial state separately you'd have tests for each file as well don't forget tests never forget tests so yeah I mean the file names could get quite long but you, it's so easy to read if you're looking for stuff you can easily find them this way you can see in the file name exactly what's going on. So yeah, that, that's how I do a Redux version of the store. In the root file of store, you would have your create store. I would put it at this point here. So inside index here, you could put a create store because it's quite a small bit piece of code. So that's one way to do it. I know I haven't really used MobX. I know it's quite popular now. I know MobX have their, all their actions in the, a single class. So again, if you do MobX style, you could probably just have a single file for it called store and that contains all the actions and, and whatever you need for that bit of store. The index file in store could be the one that combines all the reducers or sometimes I just have a separate file just for combining reducers. So yeah, that's, that's how you can build out your store and that, that's a good way to do it. What's good about this as well, you, it doesn't matter what technology you use. If you have state management, you can use this structure. It works. It works with any type of framework or technology. It's really easy to adapt to any type of framework. This is, that's, that's why it's good. I skipped over root, but that that's, should be self-explanatory. That would be your entry point for your app. In most cases, it will just be an index. If you need extra stuff, you, you might have a, like a root component that you want to have. So like an app.ui, that will go in your root. A couple of things that I've kind of skipped, I would normally have a folder for utils. Again, self-explanatory. That's an example of a util, data string. I know that already exists in JavaScript, but I'm just giving any example here just to show the architecture. Uh, but yeah, you would build it up like this as well. 
that's basically it. The key takeaway from this video, readability of code, having a structure that developers can find the code really easily, and scalability. I'm going to be putting up a small example of this structure in a small app. Um, it'll be on my GitHub page. A link will be in the description. I'm not an expert. I have no master. I'm not learning from someone. I'm learning from everyone. So I'm still learning. I'm not the best coder in the world, but I'm hoping to learn as much as I can and be able to share it in this in every format possible. Cool.